Hey everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. Peace be upon you and welcome back to my channel. Last summer, I partnered with Espresso Parts on some photo and video projects involving a specific espresso machine which they sent to me. The contracted work was done a long time ago and there are no strings attached. So you can click out if you want, but I do believe I'm being sincere and transparent in this review. Oh right, the machine. The Escaso Steel Duo and my six month review. Here we go. Aesthetic and features at a glance. One of the obvious appeals of this machine is its design. The simple clean angles and button layout make for a really chic looking machine. I've got the white one and it's powder coated carbon steel with a matte finish. It's very easy to wipe clean. Starting from the top, we've got a dedicated cup warmer, mirror finish here, easy to clean, but it can get scratched if you're not careful. It gets hotter up front than in the back. There's the cup railings, which are very useful since the edges of the warming tray are really low. The rails themselves are not fixed though, so they do rattle around when the machine is brewing. On the front interface, we've got the analog pressure gauge, which tells you the bars of pressure in the group head. Coming from the Barista Pro, this is really nice to have. Excuse my espresso checklist sticker, which you can buy from my website. The toggle switches are nice and tactile, easy enough to engage, but not loose at all. First is the power toggle switch. The brew switch, which can be flicked up for a single or down for a double. You can program these separately however you want, or pull a manual shot every time if you want. Next is the hot water toggle switch, and then the steam function toggle switch, which you have to turn on before engaging the steam wand. Under the toggle switches, we've got the LED display with a button on either side. You can program settings here, including pre-infusion time, brew temperature, and steam temperature. There's the Escaso logo, which is not a metal badge, but actually individual stickers. Moving down here, We've got a hidden screw, which adjusts the open pressure valve. Basically, you can tighten or loosen the screw to adjust the pressure limit, kind of, while brewing a shot. There's the group head, which does get hot to the touch. There's a fine mesh shower screen, which is a nice change. There's no screw to remove it, so you have to pop it out from the rubber gasket thing. Then we've got the dedicated hot water spout and the steam wand, which swivels around on a ball and socket joint. It isn't cool touch per se. It gets warm, but you can definitely move it around and not burn yourself. Down here, we've got the polished steel drip tray grill, which is much easier to clean than to say. This part cannot be removed but the drip tray is easy to pull out and clean. It has a powder coated steel front, but is otherwise plastic, so it's pretty lightweight. Coming from a Breville machine, I was used to the drip tray indicator, which tells you the drip tray is full. So I immediately noticed that it's hard to tell how much water's in here, but the tray is surprisingly big, so I don't have to empty it more than once a week. On the right side of the machine, there's the walnut wooden knob, which turns on the steam wand. And the last thing on this side is the water reservoir, which is very easy to slide out and refill or remove to wash. Whatever plastic material it's made of is very durable, and the way the machine is set up, this material doesn't get hot. There's nothing on the left side of the machine, which is why I put a bunch of magnets and stickers on it. Notable features and differences from the Barista Pro. So many people ask me if the Steel Duo is noticeably different from my first machine, the Breville Barista Pro. Yes, it is. The Steel Duo has two thermoblocks, one for brewing and one for steaming. And the PID lets us control the temperature for each of those functions, separately. No more dummy shots to heat up the group head and portafilter like on the Barista Pro. 
The Steel Duo is ready to brew and steam in like three to five minutes, but I like to wait around 10 minutes for the group head to really get to a stable temperature. The Steel Duo does have the option for pre-infusion like the Barista Pro, but also includes an optional pause for blooming. There's an adjustable OPV, which is the overpressure valve. If the pressure builds up past the set level, the valve will open up to relieve some of that pressure. I see a lot of people adjusting this to 9 bars of pressure with a blind basket in, but Escaso says to leave it at 11 or not bring it below 10 in order to achieve 9 bar pulls when there's actually a puck inside. And then the other big difference from the Barista Pro is the steam power this machine packs. But I'll talk about that later. 20 amps? One of the biggest concerns regarding the Steel Duo V2 is the 20 amp outlet requirement. Definitely make sure the circuit where you're plugging your machine in is a 20 amp circuit. For months, I had the machine plugged into a 15 amp receptacle on a 20 amp circuit and I was not getting the full power of the machine. This is what a 20 amp plug looks like. All 20 amp receptacles I've seen have this horizontal slot option. What comes in the box? I already have an unboxing video on my channel, but I'll quickly go over what came in the box. There's the machine, obviously, I hope. The Escaso branded spouted portafilter with a wooden walnut handle. There are five filter baskets, a seven gram single shot basket, a 14 gram double shot basket, a pressurized version of each of those, and then a basket for using easy serve espresso coffee pods, which I have never and will never use. And then there's also the blank or blind basket for back flushing. There's a stainless steel tamper, which I only used a couple times before getting my beautiful 58 millimeter walnut tamper from Espresso Parts, which I love. The tamper that came with the machine is shaped awkwardly, but that's because it's a two-in-one. One side is a 56.5 millimeter tamper, and the other side is a 57.5 millimeter tamper. It's awkward to hold, for sure, but I guess it's cool that they included two sizes. The filter baskets that come with the machine have a tapered shape and are better suited to the 57.5 millimeter tamper that came with the machine. But if you get a precision basket like I did, you'll probably want to get a 58 or 58.5 millimeter tamper like I did. Oh, and lastly, there was also a plastic coffee scoop included ease of use, and programming. If you're coming from a Breville espresso machine, you'll immediately notice some differences in the buttons, switches, display, and knob. The Escaso Steel Duo has toggle switches, which have a heavy-duty mechanical feel to them. The Duo's steam knob is way easier to turn than the Breville Barista Express and Pro knobs. The LED display settings are very simple, but a little less user-friendly than the Barista Pro's display and settings. Getting into the menu is a little finicky because you have to press and hold both of these buttons down at exactly the same time. Once you're in, you use the left button to shuffle through the settings. And when you want to change a setting, you press the right button to enter that particular settings menu. To go back to the main menu or whatever, you have to wait for the menu to automatically return to the setting, heading, category, I don't know what to call it. The settings and their explanations are in the manual that comes with the machine. I was interested in the PID, which Google told me stands for pelvic inflammatory disease. <laughs> Oops. So I got to change the brew temperature as well as the steam temperature which I will get into later. Programming a shot volumetrically is very easy on the Stool Duo. Stool Duo? <laughs> okay, programming a shot volumetrically is very easy on the Steel Duo. Unlike the power, hot water, and steam switches, which are either on or off, 
the switch to brew espresso is defaulted to the center position. You push it up for what's labeled coffee one, presumably a single shot, and press down for coffee two, a double shot. To program a shot, you simply press and hold the switch in the position you want to program. Do not let go until your desired shot volume has been reached. Don't go based on the timer. Keep in mind, if you have the pre-infusion set to have a pause after the pre-infusion, the machine sounds like the shot stopped, because it kind of did. So if you're programming your shot, just keep holding the button through that silent pause and it will automatically continue running as long as you keep the button held down or up. Once it's programmed, it'll run and automatically shut off when the programmed volume of output has been reached. If you need to stop a programmed shot early, you just push the button once in the same direction as the programmed shot. Pulling a manual shot on the Steel Duo is the same as programming a shot. You just press and hold the switch until you want to stop it. Doing this will override any previous programming though, so just keep that in mind. Because I use different beans every couple weeks and they might brew differently from one another, I programmed a pseudo manual shot. I programmed the upward button press with no portafilter in and ran it for 35 seconds. This way it'll always run long enough for my espresso shots without stopping too early, but I don't have to hold down the button the whole time. So I can steam while brewing and just tap the button when my shot reaches the output that I want. I also use this long programmed shot to pull a dummy shot or clean my portafilter out. Again, you just have to tap it to start it and then tap to stop it early. The duo. Okay, so arguably my favorite thing about having a duo is being able to brew and steam at the same time. That's what distinguishes the Steel Duo from the Steel Uno. If I'm still dialing in my shot, I brew the espresso first and then turn on the steam function. Then I purge and steam. That process is still much faster on this machine than it ever was on my Breville Barista Pro. If you've got your beans dialed in and your shot programmed, it's a breeze. Even when I'm using my pseudo manual programmed shot while steaming, I just have to keep an eye on the scale and tap the switch to stop the shot. Steam power. Okay, in order to use the steam wand, you have to first turn on the steam function with the switch. There is a timed auto shutoff for the steam pump, which is three minutes. So don't turn the steam function on like right when you turn on your machine. You should wait to turn it on right before or right after you brew your shot. It takes a couple of seconds to kick in. So I turn on the switch and then after like five or 10 seconds, I purge the wand and then do my thing. The steam knob is kind of like a dimmer switch in that the amount you rotate corresponds to the amount of steam power, but only to an extent. It's not just an on or off switch like the Barista Pro, but once you turn the knob like a full turn, it maxes out. So if you want only a little steam, you can try opening the knob just a little bit. But I have another trick for decreasing steam power if you need it to be more forgiving. Yeah, you heard me right. The Steel Duo steam power is powerful enough to where some people might want to decrease its power. No, it's not like a Linea Mini, but the big hype around the V2 updated version of the Steel Duo is that it boasts an extra boost of steam power. That steam power correlates to power power, like 20 amp electrical power. One day I realized it was taking me almost a minute to steam five ounces of milk which is not what I had expected, nor was advertised. And then it hit me. Several months ago, my dad and I had changed all the outlets in our house, and when I bought the receptacles, I didn't pay attention to the amperage. Sure enough, they were all 15 amp receptacles. So even though I checked the circuit breaker to make sure the entire kitchen was on a 20 amp circuit, I'd been plugged into a 15 amp outlet, which was probably limiting the power drawn and thus giving me mediocre performance. So we got a 20 amp receptacle and popped that on. 
Then I steamed as per usual and it took around 40 seconds instead of 50 something. So there was an improvement, but I still wasn't really satisfied. Then I realized I can change the steam temperature on this machine. I had it set to 265 degrees Fahrenheit, which translates to around 1.7 bars of pressure. I figure the thermoblock tech is different from dual boilers, so I cranked it up. The maximum steam temperature on the Escaso Steel Duo is 329 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's an ugly number, so I set it to 325. And bam, there was the power I was looking for. Now it takes me around 25 to 30 seconds to steam five ounces of milk. If you're comfortable steaming milk, go ahead and crank the steam temperature way up. But if you're still learning how to steam milk, then you can keep the temperature around 265 so that you have some extra time to control your aeration or vortex. Also, I have a video on how to steam milk for lattes, which is pretty helpful. So check that out if you haven't already. On to portafilters and baskets. I only use single wall baskets, so out of the box I had the 7 gram and 14 gram options. The first time I pulled a shot on this machine, I didn't realize the basket was 14 grams and I crammed 18 grams of coffee into it. Highly recommend not doing that. This is my first 58 millimeter portafilter machine. I very quickly got a 20 gram precision basket for Mespresso parts and I'm super happy with it. I'm also happy to report that most E61 portafilters are compatible with the Escaso machines. Normcore sent me their E61 portafilter and it came with its own filter basket which is compatible with magnetic dosing funnels. That basket's lip is different from the Escaso baskets though so it fits really tight in the group head. But when I swapped it for my 20 gram precision basket, the Normcore portafilter fit like a dream. I also have the E61 portafilter from Crema Coffee Products, and that one fits perfectly too. Same thing though, I had to swap the stock basket for my precision basket from Espresso Parts. All in all, just know that not all E61 portafilters are guaranteed to fit in the Steel Duo, but most probably will. The cup warmer. Another feature I was excited for was the cup warmer. I kind of didn't know what to expect, but I hoped that it would heat my cups all the way through by the time I make my drink. Apparently that was too much to ask for because while the group head takes about 10 minutes till it's fully stable in temperature, my cups are definitely not completely warm when I reach for one. That does bother me because I used to have to preheat my cups with dummy shots on my Barista Pro, and I still kind of have to do that. Okay, this is a great segue into the nitpicky criticisms I have, which might say more about me than the machine, but here goes nothing. There are two big points of frustration for me. The first is that the machine is loud when brewing espresso. The steam pump does make that thunk thunk chugging sound too, like the Barista Pro. But the sound when the Steel Duo's brewing was jarring for me when I first used it. Here's a comparison of both machines brewing espresso with my external microphone placed the same distance away from the front center of the machines. The drip tray rattles a bit too, so your cup will most likely move around a bit when you're brewing espresso. Oh, and the cup railings on the warming tray are not fixed, so they rattle too. So there's an extra element of rattling, especially if you've got any cups and glasses on top. And my second point of annoyance is the drip tray size and grill design. The size is smaller than what I was used to on the relatively chunky Barista Pro, but I truly think that wouldn't bother me as much if the grill design wasn't so counterintuitive. The cutouts on the Steel Duo's drip grill thing are just straight cutouts. So the water mostly sits on top or splashes off onto you and whatever's around the machine. 
This is mostly because the slits in the grill aren't rounded on the inner edges to encourage the water to drip down into the tray. Here's the Barista Pros tray for comparison. I wish the tray had like a hole situated for the steam wand to purge into, like the Breville machines do, and even the new Linea Mini. My third and final con doesn't bother me too much because I can work around it pretty easily. It's the steam pump auto shut off safety feature. That can be annoying if it shuts off while you're steaming. It has happened to me three or four times, twice when I was steaming around eight ounces of milk, but I realized it doesn't have to do with the amount of milk or steam power per se. It's just the auto shut off after three minutes of the steam function being on, actively steaming or not. I'd also like to note that this only happened on days when I was also filming. On those days, I have to move my camera and tripod around, so I probably turned the steam pump on and then went to go prep my milk and reframe the camera. So day to day, you shouldn't encounter this issue. Unless maybe you steam two pitchers back to back, maybe? In which case you might want to turn the steam function off for literally two seconds after the first pitcher is done, and then back on to start on your second pitcher. So yeah, now I just make sure to have my milk in my pitcher before I turn the pump on, especially on days when I'm going to be filming. All right, so that is all I have for you right now. I'll do my best to have all my mentioned tools and accessories linked in the description. I do have a discount code for both Escasso and Espresso parts, which does work on the Espresso machines. So please check the description for details. And feel free to comment below with any questions you might have. I'm pretty good at replying to comments in a timely manner. But if you need any one-on-one -on -one help with your espresso routine, consider joining my Patreon. Subscribing to my Patreon will give you access to my Discord server, which is where I can chat with you and troubleshoot your process. As always, I'm extremely grateful for all of your support. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you in the next one.